Come on, Bob. Into bed now. I said now, and I mean now. We've got school in the morning. Oh, can't I have watch TV a bit longer? Just until nine. No, we have this every night. There's always something on TV you want to watch. If it isn't Popeye or Bow Selection, it's something equally awful. Bow Selection. Well, you know what I mean. Anyway, bed. Okay, okay. Moody. I really will be moody in a minute. <laughs> I'm so scared. Right, that's it. If you don't go to bed this minute, you won't get a story. Right, what's the going to be then? The Uncharted Wood. The Witches. Harry Potter. I want the one about the hairy hands. No, we had the hairy hands the other night. Now, how about another dark story? But I like that one. It's really scary. I hated the hell you know. It gave me nightmares. Well, okay then, choose another one. There are plenty more stories about that one. Lars Goodwin, one with lots of scary books. How about the white lady who did the gorge? I know a story about a girl named Tamara. There's a story of a boy named Joe Coop. You'll like this story, I know, about Crazy Well Pook. Yeah. yeah. Tamara was a beautiful nymph, the daughter of Gnomes, who dwelt in the earth on the borders of Dartmoor. The Dart is the chief river on Dartmoor, and it is said to claim a heart every year. <coughs> Anyone who looks into Crazy Well Pool on Midsummer's Eve is said to foresee the next person to die in the past. Don't be stupid! 
Jason! She run a mile! I'm going to talk to her. Tamara! Who are you? I'm Torridge. And I'm Tavy. We live over the hill. My father told me not to talk to giants. He said you were all dangerous. That's rubbish! We're not that dangerous. We only eat deer and the occasional human. But never nymphs. I don't believe you. We're quite friendly. Really. We just want to be friends. Well, I don't know. Tamara! Tamara! Come on! Where are you? That's my father. I've got to go. No, oh, great. I think she liked us. She thought we were going to eat her. <laughs> She'll come round. If you say so. <laughs> Over the next few weeks, the two young giants, Tavy and Torridge, saw more and more of Tamara, and both fell deeply in love with the young nymph. Although they had been great friends, there had always been lots of competition between them, and they each tried to arrange a secret meeting with Tamara, without the other knowing, both intending to tell Tamara of his love for her. But Tamara was a bright young girl, and was not unaware of the situation. She enjoyed playing along with the giants, and had them both running around in circles for her. much of me. He's got a bit of a temper. I wouldn't like to see a giant in a rage. No. Probably best we don't introduce you. And my parents know that I'm useless at hunting, so they're embarrassed of me. Well, they don't sound like very supportive parents. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about your parents? Do they mind being friends with giants? Well, to be honest, I don't actually know. My dad would be really angry if I told him. He thinks I should act like all the other nymph girls and stay underground. How dull. So, where does he think you are now? Gathering nettles to make soup. You eat nettles? <laughs> yes, they're a lot tastier than human. Well, if you say so. Nettle soup. Sounds delicious. What are you talking about? You hate nettles. No, I don't. Hey, hey! I'm here! Now! Who's that? That's my father. He sounds horrible. I'm going. No! Wait, Tamara. He's not as bad as he seems. I'm not staying around to find out. Now look what you've done. It's not my fault. It's certainly not my fault. Hey, hey! What are you doing? Come here! Now I've got to go. See you later. Okay. But mark my words. Tomorrow will be mine by midsummer. It's me she likes. That's what you think. But you're wrong. Then we'll ask her. Good idea. Then we'll settle it. She'll have to choose. You or me. That's right. Then we'll know the truth. Mm. Although Tamara knew the two giants were very fond of her, she had never imagined they would make her choose between them. A few days later, she was engrossed in admiring some of the beautiful flowers that grew on the moorland villages when they discovered her. Both Tavy and Torridge thought that Tamara had picked them and were out to set the record straight once and for all. Come on! What are you waiting for? I'm just beginning to think it's a bad idea. Only because you know she's gonna pick me. Don't be stupid. Come on then. Tamara! How good to see you! Yes! 
wonderful to see you. Hello, you kindly made me jump. Sorry, you were so engrossed with picking flowers, we didn't really want to disturb you. But we have something of great importance to ask you. Well, what is it? Um. Spin it out then. Well, you know. We're all great friends, Tamara. Well, could could you put Torridge here out of his misery and tell him it's me you love? Don't be ridiculous. Tim, you meant to say that I was the one you'd chosen. I thought we'd agreed she loved me. We did not agree anything of the sort. Excuse me, but I'm actually here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, Tamara. Yes, for being very rude. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't love either of you. What? You can't mean it, Tamara. Well, yes, I do mean it. You're both good friends to me. But the best part about being friends with you is I get to run free. In the open moors in the sunshine, without fearing danger. So you've used us. <laughs> We're nothing more to you than a source of protection. Oh, don't be silly. Of course we're friends. It's just, I'm a nymph. You're both giants. It would never work. I can't believe you led us on. I thought you loved me, Tamara. Grow up and stop being so ridiculous. Tamara, I would like a word with you. Alone. No. Mm -hmm. Father, I didn't realise you... There are just a lot of things you haven't realised. What do you mean, Father? Perfectly well, what I mean. You have been out <coughs> and out in the other world. After everything <coughs> I've said to you about the dangers, you've ignored every word I've said. You are a disgrace, both <laughs> your mother and I, and I will not have it because you led both of these giants to believe that they will marry you. But father, how can you say that? Just because I love the outdoors and the sunshine, you treat me as if I'm a criminal. That's quite enough already. Go home and lunch. No, I won't. I beg your pardon. I'm not going home. I refuse to go back. I want to spend the rest of my life in the sunshine of the open moors. So you want to spend the rest of your life in the open air. Then you shall as a stream. What? No, I'm sorry. No, I'm it's too late going. for that. Swirling, swirling, roundabouts, twisting, turning, swishing sounds. Dancing, spinning, leaping free! Tomorrow, you are now a stream. you may ask. Or Tavy, after calming down, went to ask his father's advice. His father, who knew Tavy never really had the temperament to be a giant, and that he would never really be happy without his Tamara, turned him into a river also and sent him off to find Tamara. The two rivers met near the sea and became one, now flowing into the English Channel. Poor Torridge, however, was not so fortunate. Distraught, he went to ask the advice of an old magician, who said he could turn him into a river also. What Tori did not realise was the magician was very devious and hated all giants. The magician sent Tori northwards, eventually flowing into the sea near Biddeford, angry but still searching for his beloved Tamara. From this day on, both the good and evil spirits of those creatures turned into Dartmoor rivers have haunted the moorland waters.
One summer, a family came down from London to camp in the fields of Dunnebridge Farm. They had two delightful children, Christopher and Sally, and enjoyed taking long country walks and swimming in the river that ran beside the farm. Oh, hurry up, you're so slow! Oh, shut up, Chris, you've got longer legs. What's that got to do with anything? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Can you hear something? No. Don't do it again! No, I'm not. Why didn't you believe me? It's coming from the river. You're making it up to scare me. No, I'm not. Don't be stupid. You're always doing things to scare me, Chris. Why? Just... Never mind. The person from the river has to knock out the farm's pit. That's so unfair. Uh, look, Angel. They love it here. It's so good to be ready in London and all the buttons. Quite. Devon is the perfect relaxing holiday we need. We're absolutely right to come to Dartmoor. <coughs> well, we need to look ill at the end of this term, and I'm sure Sally's not eating properly at that school. Sometimes I wonder, dear, whether we made the right decision to send him away at boarding school. I know. But I think they come to children at heart. Well, at least we're here now, and we'll just make the very best of it whilst we can. Yes, yeah. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm starving. We had to keep a couple of hours ago. So I'd oh, be hungry all this. So hungry. I'm gonna eat a horse. Oh, I can. That's disgusting, Chris. Well, at least you've got to act up. Who had a nice walk then? Absolutely spit, my friend. We went across to uh, two bridges and then we walked back beside the river. <laughs> we stopped on the riverbank and had our picnic. It was delightful. Well, it's a lovely day for it. My own people went too close to the water's edge, though. Rivers can be dangerous, unpredictable, like. <laughs> the river looked very calm today. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Every year the river darts is said to claim a heart. Oh, just make sure it isn't yours. Well, surely that's just a fire sale spread. Maybe a part of John, but you don't come from down here. I know these parts like a pack of my hand, and I'm warning you, don't get too close to the river. Okay, Ted. Thanks for the warning. I'm going to see my cows now. See you at dinner. Yes, sir. Very good. We'll see you later. I was really up, don't you think? I, I want you to uh, listen to what the farmer had to say. That was not a five anymore. I want you to be sensible. Now the same goes for you too, sir. Yes, Dad. Right, off you go. You get ready for dinner.
जी हम लोग सारे In 1927, on Midsummer's Day, Christopher Holman was found face down in the River Dove, near Dunbridge Farm, where his family had been staying for a holiday. It was said to have been an accident, and nothing could be proved otherwise. But his poor family, mourning the death of their beloved Christopher, remembered what the farmer had said about the river, and knew there was more to it than merely an accident.
I hear you've got a birthday on the rich line, baby. Yeah, I'm just helping your farmer out. He hasn't been quite right since his wife left him. Well, a bit mad, some say. Well, I don't think the treasure business out there got any old friend named himself. Where did his wife blame him? That's the way she left. Well, I can't really help having a kitty drown on the property, can I? Old Fred swears that the um, river took him. Says the dark thing's a victim every year. <laughs> no one the locals think he's gone mad. Oh, the dark is a strange river, I uh, hope the old prince is as you Jim, can. don't be soft. That's just old wives' tales. Oh, come on, it doesn't pay to be so dismissive of old stories. We have no proof. How can it be believed? Well, <laughs> you'd like to prove me wrong, would you? Yeah. You set us a challenge. We'll prove you wrong, all right? Okay, well, I'll just think that. Um, you know that crazy old poop lies in between Princeton and Cornwall? Yeah. It said, year of this summer, and you go down there at midnight, look into the water, you'll see you looking up the faces of the next person to die in the parish. That's the load of robbers! Do you seriously expect us to believe that? Well, I'm swearing it's true! Well, we'll, we'll test all your theory. Oh, the last will be on you! Yeah, and the drinks. Well, it just so happens that you could be in for a good job because it's been summer's eve tonight. Oh, but I was going to help my. Oh, no, that's alright, Eric, if you haven't got the bottle for No, it, we'll do it! Bottle. We'll test out your theory. Yeah, 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 we'll do it. Well, that will be a pretty little bit. Of Pretty little chore for you then. <laughs> Look for hearing what you've got to say, baby. <laughs> All right, boys. I'll see you later, Jim. Yeah, see you tomorrow for the drinks. <coughs> we'll have to leave the bike there. Oh, so you won't have enough pets when we get back. Yeah. I'm reckoning to be suspended from this ground. God, where can you put this bag? Bricks? No, you the tent. Thanks. Well, I hope you remember the bears. Yeah, pretty darn like that one. For me, I'm to listen to you rambling on about my old Fred. Hey, you ain't that bad. I was joking. Right. You're just in that house down there. Oh, it's that old woman. The old kit. What, the one my uncle found wandering around the moors? That's the one. She walks to Campton Market every month, right across the moors. Another mad one, then. Doesn't believe in modern transport either. She was on a pony, but clapped somewhere near Tavistock and never looked back. Come, we'll have to get there before sunset. Craig! Craig, you there? Hello, oh, Jim, I was just making some supper. Oh, thanks, Fred. How have you been? Oh, not so bad. What brings you down here? Well, I'm looking for a bit of advice, really. Oh, yeah. But it's a bit delicate, you know. Well, let's hear it then. Well, you know that lad, uh, Pete, this man, Sam? Yeah, Pete's a good man. I've sent him to the crazy old pool to try his little legend. You done what? Oh, that doesn't sound like the next person to die. Oh, I know, but they didn't believe me and they remember me and that, you know. What were you thinking? Well, I had to show up, you know what I mean. It's Midsummer's Eve today, Jim. At midnight, there's going to be trouble. You mark my words. Dark Lord is not to be messed with, Tom. You're right. I'd better get down there before it's too late. It's 10 30 now. You can't, can't possibly make it in your old track room. Mine's broken down. Well, I've got to do something. Look, Jim, I know you've never meant any harm by him. You just want to prevent the worst. But you know as well as I do, you can't make it by midnight. There are just some powers in this world that us humans weren't meant to mess with. Well, you've got to help me. Enough of the last time I tried to help. Well, come on. I know it's my fault. I caused this problem. But you've got to help me. You can't be barging in here. Betty me. Come to you sometime. Your mirror. I haven't eaten that myself yet. All right, then. Well, please yourself. I'm going on the all. Now you do that. Are you there? Oh, at last. This ten was a ton. 
Oh, good thing we're all before dark. Yeah, we might be for the last place. <laughs> you were scared of the dark as well, aren't you? Shut up. God. Mm. Oh. Oh, it looks so still. Almost looks like glass. I wonder how deep it is. You want to go in and find out? I'm, I'm fine here. God, I'm never such a girl. Look, I still get wet. That's all. Wimp. Look, I can't swim, okay? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it in that way. I'm fine. <coughs> yeah. I know I don't really fancy it either. So this ledge that Jim's all about, what's meant to happen? Well, supposedly, you've got to come up here, thanks, in the middle of the night, on Midsummer's Eve, and you'll see the next people to die in the parish, just in that pool. Lord, what rubbish you've asked me. It's a bit odd. I don't know why Jim believes in all this cart trap. Well, he hasn't lived in the moors all his life. So have a lot of people, they don't believe no boys' tales. It's strange. God, you'd be thankful the mist isn't down. Yeah. You're not getting scared of me, are you? No, it's just weird, that's all. Everything's so still. Just drink a drink and stop moaning. Summer's Eve drew closer. Pete and Sam sat by the edge of Crazy Well Pool, waiting in silence. As the blackness of the moors closed in around them, they each wondered to themselves whether this had been such a good idea in the first place. Although they wouldn't have admitted it to the other, they were both dreading the moment when they were looking into the pool, and they wondered who would step back at them. Less than a mile away, at Colleen's farm, Old Kitty was making her supper of wild mushrooms and bean sprouts. She was known as a healer, or white witch, and knew the moors inside out. She knew the power of the moors and the reality behind the many legends. Many people thought her to be mad, and she was often found walking miles to find her ingredients for her various concoctions. Kitty had a gift of predicting events, and many people found her an intriguing character. Oh, there is going to be trouble tonight. The air is so still. Every creature is holding their breath. Midsummer's Eve is a strange time. Nothing's certain. Nothing's normal. Everything's in suspense. Like time stopped. Everything's frozen for a moment. Then released. And everyone lets out a sigh of relief. Oh, there is going to be trouble tonight. <coughs> and fears. Tell me the worst of the end of the holy. Before the release, back to routine. Midsummer's Eve has a part to be seen. Whisper, whisper, thoughts and fear. Tell me the worst of the end of the hold. I'm going to the pool. The water will tell me all I need to know. Ten minutes ago. Stop counting. Just find out where you're an asshole. Look, we'll know the worst soon enough. You don't still believe we're gonna see something, do you? I don't know what to believe. I don't like this place. I wish you never come. Just pull yourself together. Nothing's gonna happen. We need that right from the start. It's just a legend. How did I come around in the first place? I want some truth to it. God, I don't know. All I know is, is that we're sitting on on dark or in the middle of the night, just to prove we can't predict the next people to die in the parish. Is it a bit ridiculous when we put it that way? But Jim's a nice warm bed having a right old laugh at our expense. You must look like right fools. We'll be a laughing stop. <coughs> What's that? Who's there? Is that you, Jim? Because you can come out right now! Who is it? Stop fooling around. Oh. Did 
Didn't expect anyone else to be up here. Not this time. Were you two bathing on our bits on tea? Or knew that? Woman from down in the valley. That's right. Okay. We were just camping at such a lovely evening. Where's your tent? Don't lie to old woman, lad. I can see through you. Well, what are you really doing? It was more the, the bets, really. Jim Roberts, he made a bet with us that we wouldn't come up here on Midsummer's Eve. What are you doing now, then? Waiting. We are waiting to see who's with Nets in the pool at midnight. Jim seems to think we'll see the next person to die in the parish. Oh, he does, does he? Well, if I were you two lads, I go now before you do any more damage. Why? We're here now. We might as well stay and see if we can see something exciting. Anyway, you can't stop us. Oh, that's true, lad. But if I were you, I'd take the advice of a wise old woman. I've seen it happen before. What's happened before? Bad things happen when you don't show respect for the moors. It's a power to be reckoned with. You're as bad as all the rest. Who's to stop us doing anything we want? Please yourselves, but you be fools to try it. We don't have to take orders from you or no. It's midnight. Quick, watch. Come on, it's just our, just our reflections. Make sure it wasn't true. Oh, thank God. I don't know what I've done to my view. Oh, God. I had visions of trouble, but I never thought it was bad. Where's she going? Man or black? What was she doing? Wandering around the moors of midnight. Probably sent by Jim to scare us. Well, I don't think she's carrying tonight. Jim said to stay for midnight, not all night. We haven't even set up the tent yet. Yeah. That's kind of why I can go. It's down. Where is it? Uh, Sam and Pete have just had a terrible motorbike crash a mile down the road. Was this just fate, or have the reflections they would seen in the pool been true to the myth that Jim swore by? It? What's that over there? Can't be another tree falling in the river. Maybe it's another one of my sheep falling in. Jim too. He set off from here late last night on foot. 
to search Love's voice. I thought he was mad. I think he found more than he bargained for. What do you think he I think he was led by the dart. Oh, God, why didn't I go with him? You mustn't blame yourself. This was meant to happen. Jim knew he'd done wrong. Oh, this is a sad way to me, anyway. It was Midsummer's Eve when the dark took that boy. I'm cursed if I live here. We all know there's a few badgers followed by a few good. Oh, Let's right. just hope there's a change for the better, eh? Let's hope so. understand why such good people had been denied the one thing they longed for. They lived in a cottage near Lifford Gorge, and Jenny visited the river every day, as she found it a quiet place where she could think her own thoughts in peace. weather today? Yes, it's gorgeous. Water's reflecting the sunbeams too, then. Yes, although the beauty is deceiving of the underlying rocks. Not the best place for a swim, some might say. No. You love a good girl, then, love? Yes, I, I live up at Smallland on top of the hill. Oh, you must be all trees, these. That's right. Did you know my aunt well? Oh, yes. Our fathers were great friends. Larry, <coughs> so are we. T'was a great shame when she passed from this world so young. I was only nine when she died. The house was empty for years until my husband and I moved in. Oh, it's a lovely house for a now. <coughs> Audrey rattled around with it for years. I think she would have felt more appropriate if she settled down on it. Yeah. Oh dear. She would have been a wonderful mother as well. Very calm woman. Never raised her voice. As I said, I didn't really know my aunt. She did nearly marry one so. For Builder, I believe. That fell through. <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't really know very much about my aunt, and I really don't know you. Sorry, love. Didn't mean to cause offence. It's fine, I, I've just got to go, that's all. Good day, good day. Yes, you too. Strange girl, that one. Something not quite right there. Anyway, better go and find this storm right before dark. Thank <laughs> you. 
to Jane, but you've got to keep positive. Well, at least you've got a husband, a nice house, and a good job. I'm sorry, sir. I never actually complained. It's just that this is the only thing I've ever really wanted. Have you thought of walking away? Maybe getting another job. No, I can never leave this place. It'll happen. It's just hard having a constant reminder working at school. <coughs> I love the children, but sometimes it gets me down going into work every day, looking after other people's offspring. As I said, have you thought of getting another job? Or maybe leaving away? No, I couldn't. I love this place. I've always been living with her. I've been attached to it. It's where I grew up in the open. Yes, I can see that you have a certain affection. Well, when I was young, my brother and I would always be swimming with her, even in winter. And when I would come to stay with my aunt, I'd be used to tinkling down the continual flow of the river. It's hypnotic somehow. Mm, I can't say I have no need to be near the water. I agree, there is a certain hypnotism about the river. When I was young, my mother used to tell me the water spirit, and I became convinced I'd seen the white lady at Infant Gorge several times. Oh, Jen, not just from old myth. No, there's a truth to it that goes beyond the myth. I feel safe here in the river. I feel like I belong. Well, at least someone feels secure about where they live. You know, David still hasn't found any work, and I don't know how we're going to keep the house if no money comes in soon. Well, we're looking for a new career school if you're interested. Mrs. Walton is retiring next month, and we're probably on the lookout for a placement. Oh, that sounds ideal. I'll go to the headmaster first thing on Monday morning. Good. Well, I'm glad we've got that next month. Well, look, Jen, stop worrying. What will be, will be. Anyway, what are you up to next month? Uh, next Saturday. Do you fancy a trip to Oakhampton Market? I heard there's an excellent basket maker who's having a stall there. I need to get some new shoes for the girls. Oh, why do kids' feet grow so fast? That sounds lovely. I'll see you soon. And good luck with the job. Oh, thanks, Jen. And stop worrying for nothing. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, so how have you been there, Glenn? Glenn, 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 Glen
on my mind. That's right, my love. Anything I can help with? No, I shouldn't think so. Are you with? No, 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 I'm in good health, thank you. Well, I'm here, you see. I help people. Some call me a white witch. Use the natural ingredients of the land to create charms and potions for various ailments. Well, I'm, I'm not ill, so I probably wouldn't apply. Well, what's wrong, my dear? You I, can tell me anything you would love. I'd, I'd really rather not say. Go on, then, dear. Well, have a good day, then. I want a baby. No. Well, I thought it might have something to do with Ashley. I've always dreamed of having a large family. I was one of six. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's going to work out that way. I'm getting old, you see. Soon there'll be no hope. You're a local girl, you said. Yes, I've lived and lived all my life. Well, I may just be able to help you then. What? How could you help me? I'll make your love potion from your local plant. But surely that's just gypsy nonsense. Oh, well, believe what? you will, my dear, but I've had charms and potions passed down through generations of my family. But how do you know they work? Surely they must fail sometimes. A reason a charm or potion would to deliver what it was intended to do. It is the people involved did not fully believe in the magic. So my husband would have to believe in it too. Oh, yes he would come, dear. Well, I'm sceptical, so he's bound to think I've gone mad. Well, why don't you go away? Have a think about it and let me know what you decide. Yes, I think I will. There is one downside, though. If the potion works, there will be a damaging effect on another area of life. Life's never perfect, that's reflected in the work I do. I see. Well, thank you for your time. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, I'm kidding, though. Oh, you did, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Prince Sam, you're a cool word and praise well cool. Oh, I know her well, I'm... Jenny. You're Jenny. That's right. Well, I'll see you soon, Kitty. Thank you for your time. See you soon, my love. Oh, dear. Come on, you want some carrots? Yes, you want some carrots? You look 
worrying about the school again. Worrying about the school's finances, on and on. Well, actually, no, I wasn't thinking about the school's financial situation. Well, what were you worrying about then, love? About having a baby, Matthew. <coughs> Something you haven't quite realised my need for yet. Well, uh, you know I can't achieve as much as you do, dear. But, you know, it'll happen when the time is right. When is the time ever going to be right? I'm fed up with waiting. It's never going to happen. Oh, come on, don't say that. You know, you upset yourself. <coughs> it won't make it any better. Well, what do you expect me to do? I'm fed up with hoping. Why can't I have the one thing I've always wanted? Well, don't say to me, love. You know, I'm on a child. But, you know, why do you always come on at me and make me the outsider in this? Well, actually, there is one thing you could do. <laughs> yes? I met an old woman who used to know my Aunt Audrey. She's known for her healing <coughs> powers and ability to use various natural ingredients to make potions and ointments. So, what, so what's her going to do then? <coughs> Conjure up a little baby out of a cauldron? No, Matthew. She's going to make us a luck potion. <coughs> it sounds to me like the sort of nonsense the gypsies are always trying to sell me. No, 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 she knows the land well and would use our own ingredients to create a unique luck potion. I don't know. Well, I suppose we tried everything. I don't see why we shouldn't give it a go. Well, thank you. Well, what else have we got to lose? Nothing at all, really, perhaps, except my Saturday. Matthew! <laughs> Who wants some greens? Come on, we got it here. Bathe in the river every day. Why the river? 
Oh, because it's important to you, my love. Anything else? Your husband must also drink the potion every day. And then what do you do? You wait, my dear. Wait, see what the future holds. Thank you very much for having the kindness to do this for us. Is there anything that I can do for you in return? Don't, don't be ridiculous, my dear. I never accept anything for my, for my work. That uh, must be getting old. For the sunsets completely, eh? Thank yeah. you once again. That's all right, thank you. I just hope it works. Well, I'll see you, my dear. Okay. Thank you, Bye, my dear. fell down the steep banks of the waterfall, which are now known as Kit's Steps, after the unusual old woman. It's such a lovely day today. Look how beautifully the river's reflecting the sunbeams. Yes, although the beauty does not go below the surface, these rocks are lethal. Well, actually, there aren't any rocks in this part of the stream. It's further up near the waterfall where you have to be careful. Can we go swimming, Mum? Well, I'm not sure. Rivers are dangerous things, and they're so unpredictable. <clears throat> we'll be careful, Mum. Please let us go in. I'm so hot. Please let us go swimming. Why don't you come in too, Mum? <coughs> well, I don't know. Oh, go on. You can go in. I'll come down and paddle. <coughs> oh, I think it's far too cold for me to swim. You go to swim, Joe. No, I don't think I will today. I've been swimming every day for the last month. Oh. I think I'll just go for a walk up by the waterfall. Oh, okay then. Come on, girls. I'll see you soon. Mm. Have fun. Okay. Mind how you go down the back. change that. 
I just wish I'd realised what you said about the potion having a damaging effect on another area of life. Did you know all along? I can't believe that you would have sacrificed yourself for the sake of my happiness. I feel guilty for what I'm about to tell you. But I am so happy and cannot ever imagine being unhappy again. I feel as if I've been given a second chance. I feel so alive. I'm pregnant, Kitty. Your potion worked. You've given me the one thing I've always dreamed of. How can I ever repay you? All I can do is say thank you. Fate has decided. What will be, will be. The river is calm now. Everyone is at peace. The next year, Jenny gave birth to the baby she'd always dreamt of, a girl they named Kit. They stayed in their cottage near the River Lid. And Jenny often had visions about the white lady who protected her and her family from the evil that lurked in the Devil's Gorge. <coughs> right, time for bed. Good night. Good night, Dad. See you in the morning. Lie down and go to bed. Good night, Mum. Go to sleep. You've got school in the morning. Good night. <laughs>